Welcome back for another episode of Transform Your Workplace. I'm your host, Brandon Laws, and I've got Nicole Blevins, which we're sneaking in one more podcast episode before you're likely to be out on leave. It's great to have you on, Nicole. Excited to be here. Thanks for inviting me back for this very important topic that we're going to talk about. Yeah, we're going to talk about self-care. And I think many people would probably agree when I say that or many people are bad at this prioritizing their own self-care and you got an interesting story that you wanted to share uh, about your own self-care and uh, yeah why don't you share what happened recently i think it's fairly well known (laughs) that i am notoriously bad at my own self-care i work really hard and sometimes i see like my job or my work is also a hobby and i'm involved in perma and all these other things outside of work as well and so i rarely take and I feel like being a leader, it's important to be vulnerable and share that with your team. So it is something that my team knows that I'm working on. And recently, a colleague of mine, Michelle Hansen on our team, who is amazing, by the way, if you don't know her, reached out, was like, hey, you love Taylor Swift, right? I'm like, yes, I'm absolutely obsessed with all things Taylor Swift. And she mentioned that there was a local trivia night happening, Taylor Swift trivia night, and thought that would be fun to do and asked if I would like to do that and go and participate that and I said you know what yeah let's do that at first I was like I've got so much going on can I really take the time out of my schedule to do this but I decided to go ahead and do it and we went we had a really great time we did not win unfortunately there was some crazier Taylor Swift fans there (laughs) I know but I will I do have to say our team name was shake it office get it Oh, okay. yes, I pretty, get it. I thought that was pretty creative. <laughs> and it was a lot of fun. Like I had a lot more fun than I thought I would. I was initially stressed about saying yes to that and doing it. But afterwards, I was like, this was really fun. And I need to do this again, or do more things like this that get me away from like my normal routine. And that's something that's just for myself that I enjoy, that I can have fun with. And it like created camaraderie too. I got to know um, Michelle and other members of our team better. And it was just a really fun experience. And it just made me reflect on how important like self-care is. And it is something that I struggle with, but doing that one thing helped me realize like I need to do more things for myself and get out more and have fun and not just worry about work or home life or all of that all the time but something as small as going to a local trivia night can really impact your week and I felt better the rest of the week like I felt like I had a lot of fun like I had a more positive outlook going into work and personal stuff and it really I think just transformed my week and just how I felt about self-care and prioritizing that more. So that's my story that really prompted this. And I thought it would be good to talk about self-care because as someone who struggles with it, just doing it and having others on my team, like reach out and support me in doing that and suggesting things I could do was really impactful as well. Yeah. It's so important to have things that are outside of your normal routine. And that seems like accidental in some ways. It just came out of nowhere asking you to go to a trivia night. I used to go randomly see movies with Tyler Mavison, who's a former colleague of ours and a good friend of mine. We'd go leave work four o'clock and go catch a a movie together. And I I would never do that on my own. And so being able to just do something else that's like outside of my normal routine, both in my personal life and at work, it does shake things up a little bit. I want to say shake it off. I know. I love it. (laughs) But yeah, it just gets you out of that routine and helps you decompress a little bit. So recently I've been going on a little while, but I'm trying to be more intentional about self-care. I think you really do have to schedule it into your, I block out my 12 to one every single day. I don't want to schedule meetings if I don't have to. And I always block that out for sure eating lunch, but I usually try to go for a walk if it's nice outside or I'll do some sort of 10 minute meditation. I've recently been my, my, doctor actually recommended Andrew Huberman's 10 minute non-sleep deep is it not it's like a it's basically like a deep not like non-sleep reset so you basically do a body scan and then by the end of it you've reset your nervous system and all the inputs that you've been like experiencing the information overload that you've experienced it like completely resets and so I feel refreshed when I do something like that but nice. that's intentional, right? Like I wouldn't, yeah. if I didn't plan that, I wouldn't have that in my schedule. And so I think for anybody like listening, try to 
plan yeah. it if you can but like then with those things like the trivia night like just, just start saying yes to some things that you normally yeah wouldn't. yeah i think scheduling is important but i think the saying yes in this like random instance that came up helped me like see how important it is and the actual effect that it had on me and my mental state and my body and my work which is making me better about scheduling those things. I'm like, all right, when's the next Taylor Swift trivia night? Oh, there's another one happening in September. (laughs) Let's do that. And I also try to be really intentional about scheduling lunches for myself at 12 to one. I think I usually do 1230 to 130 timeframe because then I'm protecting that time for me. Walk away, grab lunch, go out for a walk or do things that really help break up the day and are things that I can enjoy and will help me come back with a refreshed perspective and mindset and ready to tackle whatever challenges are going to come after that. I think it's a balance of both scheduling and being intentional with that time, but also saying yes when you can. There's always going to be a million and one reasons to say no, right? Oh, I've got too much work or I've got all these chores that I have to do at home. And I find that when I get home, I'm so tired anyways, that they're still there tomorrow and the next day, right? And so saying yes, I think is important because it does show you how that's going to make you feel and how that impacts you and makes you more likely to do more self-care activities or things like that for yourself moving forward. Yeah. There's a lot of different types of self-care activities as well. Like I talked about like mindfulness, I think just being in silence could also help going for a walk, uh, exercise, reading a book, yeah. drinking coffee out in the sunshine. And then there's like the the bonding opportunities as well. And I think employers have a unique opportunity to try to create more opportunities for people to just have accidental conversations and feel included in, in belonging. And that can re-energize people. Like yesterday, yeah. our culture team, which is Excite, yep. stands for Xenium Culture Inclusion Team and Enhancement, they are so good about creating opportunities yeah. for people to get together, whether it's hybrid or in person. But like yesterday they did an ice cream social. Yeah. I wasn't able to attend, but I was there. The pictures from it look so fun. Yeah. It's around noon or whatever. They bought a bunch of ice cream and a bunch of toppings and allowed people to come and hang out and have ice cream. That's yeah. so easy and it doesn't cost very much. Yeah. What a great opportunity for people. I agree. I loved that. I was able to be a part of that. And it is another like self-care activity. And I think people think of self-care as, oh, it has to be like meditation or mindfulness or those types of things, which personally I'm really bad at. I've been told you should try meditation and mindfulness. And I have, and my brain (laughs) just runs a million miles an hour and I like just can't do it. But having that ice cream social like really helped it gave me a break from the day I got to connect with my other colleagues, talk about the Taylor Swift trivia night that we did. That was fun. And just some other things going on in my life, which was really nice to just connect and have an excuse really to, and permission to do that and to step away and do something fun that prioritizes myself and my connection with others rather than no, you have to be at your desk doing work right now. Yeah. We need breaks. I love the wearable technology too. I used to have an Apple watch that I just, I just let go because it's been like six years and the battery life sucks. So I ended up getting <laughs> an, an our, our, I think it's pronounced our, our ring or, oh, aura yeah, ring aura or something ring. Like yeah. yeah. So I, I got it um, a few weeks back because I just wanted to closer attention to how my body's doing throughout the day. I was noticing certain times like I was speaking or something and my heart rate would jump up. I don't know if it's anxiety or stress or yeah. something like that. Just playing nerves or something. And so are there things that I can do to help reduce the stress I may be feeling at the time? Because my body does some weird things when I don't want it to. (laughs) And so like just being able to see those analytics and the trends, like maybe there's some things I can do to change, whether it's diet or sleep or going for a walk right before a presentation or something like that. I think we need to be aware a little bit, right? Because otherwise we let the day control us. Yeah, I agree. And it's helpful to have that data because then you can also see where the trends are or maybe what those like triggers or stressful moments are for you and what you can do to like decompress or self-care, recognize that in the future, right? When it comes up and put in put some strategies together to allow yourself to de-escalate or whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's important to know yourself a little bit too, right? And take the time and space with yourself to recognize what it is that you need and how you can 
get your needs met. Yeah. One of the things, and I don't know if, I feel like this is going to be true for you because you're such a self learner, but when I'm reading a book or I watch a Ted talk or watch a YouTube video and I learn something new that re-energizes me and it like resets like my brain. And in some respects, like whatever I'm like the tasks in front of me, I'm like letting those fade to the background because I'm like learning something new or an idea is like gave me something to go forward with. And that for me is really energizing. I don't know if you feel the same, but for sure. I love learning new things and I feel like every day is an opportunity to learn more. I love reading books as well. I'm notorious for I'll start reading a book. And if in the first chapter, I'm not like engaged or I'm like, this is not capturing my attention, I will give it up. And there I've talked to people about this and they are like, (laughs) I still have to finish it because maybe it's like, a series where the pilot is not great, but you got to get through a few episodes and then it's good. And I'm like, I just can't, I won't be motivated to finish it. And I'm like, let me try something else. But yeah, when I find a really good one and I get through that, then I'm like, wow, this was a really good book. And I'll even be like, I need to read this again because it's a good reminder for myself. And yeah, I I agree. I, I love that. And doing what makes you happy or makes you feel re energized and energetic and helps you move forward, I think is what's important. Yeah, I love it. I I hope people listening really start to pay attention to their own self care habits and and hopefully grab some ideas that we shared. And I would love to hear from other people like what kind of self care things that they're doing that might fall in line with the the categories that we described, or if there's something that's totally out of this world that you should share with us. I want to hear about it because I'm open to all sorts of ideas. Nicole, anything that you want to say in closing? Yeah, I would just add, like, also take the initiative to help others prioritize self-care as well, like others have done for me. You know, if you know opportunity, that would be great for someone, like, reach out and bring it up, invite people out, or say yes yourself to things like that, because it really does make a difference. My guest has been Nicole Blevins. She's the X Factor award winner (laughs) at Zenium, by the way. We had a great company party recently and Nicole won uh, this amazing award X factor at Zenium. And it's true. Like Nicole, you are such a staple at this organization and really made a lot of great change for the better. So just appreciate you and coming on this podcast and fitting time in for me. I really appreciate you. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much. It was great. And I'm sure we'll talk again soon. Hey, thanks so much for tuning in for today's episode of Transform Your Workplace. The content on this show is strictly for general information and educational purposes only so that you can go transform your workplace in a positive way. The views, thoughts, and opinions expressed on the show are the guest's own and don't represent the views, thoughts, and opinions of either Zenium HR, the sponsor of the show, or me, the host, Brandon Laws. Additionally, Zenium HR or myself, Brandon Laws, doesn't endorse any guest, their business, or any organization they represent, so discretion is advised. We encourage you to work with a trusted advisor to find a custom approach that fits your organization's needs. Thanks for tuning in to today's episode.